welcome back to the channel. Today we are on the episode 20 of the questions and answers session. And with this information, you will be able to understand what it means to have Kendra Lord's benefic in Dushtana, because the question was related to Mercury and Jupiter in the 8th house, how to see the proper Sadasati and Saturn Antardasha. And also we have a questions related to Atmakaraka, which is the soul, so we will give information how to dabble with those ideas. Okay, so let's go to the first question. Okay, so let us first talk about the Sadashati and about the Shani Antardasha. If you'd like to get more information what is the difference between the Dasha and the transits, then please see this video here. To sum it up, we could say that the transits are more showing how the elements are changing and the Dasha will show us the direction of such changes. The Dasha is giving us more understanding and a picture of the situation, what's going on. This is specifically when we are using the planet of Dasha, which is called the Dasha Graha, the planets which is activated in a particular period of life, like for example, now we can be in the Venus Dasha, 20 years. So we can take this planet to the special chart of career life, and then we will know what is going on in our environment. For example, if it's seventh house, then we are doing business. If it's sixth house or 10th house, we are more employed and so on. Uh, there is also a combination of Dasha and transits. For example, there is a technique which is called Dasha Pravesh Chakra, which means that we are seeing what is the position of planets, which is the transit, at the starting of the Dasha, at the starting of the new period. So in our tradition, this was uh, very much used, even in the Vimshotri Dasha, which demands very sensitive time. So I don't recommend you starting Dasa Pravesh Chakra with the Vimshotri Dasha, but you can start it with the Rasi uh, Dashas, like for example, Shula Dasha, which Guruji was teaching in the lecture of Shula Dasha, and also about Narayana Dasha and so on. So we have the Kantak Shani when the Saturn is in the first four, eight, or 10, so basically when it's influencing the 10th house from the moon, which means that there are some challenges to our career life. So when Saturn is in the Sastra position from the moon, then this is the Kantakshani, and we have also the Sadashati, which is the position of transiting Saturn in 12th, 1st or 2nd from our natal moon. Natal means our birth moon. So we are seeing Saturn will go through the 12 houses, and then we have to see if this is coming to our 12th, 1st or 2nd from our uh, moon in our chart. Uh, we are also seeing the Jupiter transit. So Jupiter is good when it's Kendra to Aruda Lagna and it's not so good, but it's giving us the realization, purity and contact with the Satya, with the truth, when the Jupiter is in the Trikona to Aruda Lagna, so 1st, 5th and 9th. Also very important is the Rahu and Ketu transits to the Aruda Lagna. When Rahu is transiting the Trikona to the Aruda Lagna, we have the period of uh, enjoyment, which is called in Sanskrit Hoga. Whilst when Ketu is in transits in Trikona, 1st, 5th and 9th, to our Aruda Lagna in our chart, then we have the time for spiritual uh, realization, it can be some detox, purification, we are going for some meditation retreat. So you can see in which period you are. Are you in period of material enjoyment or in that spiritual seeking, in that soul seeking, we could say. So to do that, you need to see where is your Aruda Lagna in the chart. For example, let's say in my case, it's in Virgo. And then I see if Rahu is in Trikona, so first, fifth and ninth, in actual transit. So you need to know where is Rahu and Ketu now. So if Rahu is in, let's say, Virgo, Taurus and uh, Capricorn, then I am in that enjoyment part of my life. If Ketu is in first, fifth and ninth, so if Ketu would be in Virgo, Taurus or Capricorn, then it means that I'm in that spiritual period in my life. So now the big secret and big change, total change for your reading of the Sadashati. While most people are taking the natal moon in the Rasi chart, Rasi is the main chart, D1. What the Nadi texts are saying, the Nadis are the oldest astrological texts, for example, very important, very popular one is Deva Kerala or Chandra Kalanadi. My Guruji is intensively researching this Shastra and is very often giving me some uh, shlokas from this book. And there we have taught that we have to see the Sadashati from the moon in the Navamsha. So moon in the Navamsha is the reference point, not moon in the Rasi. This will give us much better understanding of what's going on. Because we know 
if Saturn is transiting the 12 from the Moon, this is giving us the change when it comes to our married life. If it's related to second house, it's about career life. So these are people outdoors. 12 is people indoors. And Lagna is my health. And now when we see the Dasha, then we can know what kind of change is that? Is it divorce? Is it marriage? And so on. So that is the how we are going, how we are connecting the Dasha with the transit. And as I said, in the Dasha, we have this privilege in Vedic Astrology, we can see this planet in the divisional chart. We can take the Dasha Graha, planet which is working now in my life. So I need to know what planets are controlling my life now. You can go to Deva Guru, put your birth details, birth date, birth time, birth uh, place, and then uh, you will go to Vimshotri Dasha. There will be a special table with the Dashas. You are going there, you are opening Vimshotri Dasha, and you can see what is the big period. For example, it can be Rahu. Now, in the big period, there will be nine sub-periods. What is my sub-period? So I can be in Rahu Venus, Rahu Jupiter, Rahu Moon. So this will then give you what's going on in the two years, three years period, right? Depending on the Mahadasha. So then even this Antardasha, the sub-period, is again divided into nine sub-sub-periods. So this will give you like one year or even eight months understanding what's going on. And then you can know what is that change about. Are you marrying? Are you divorcing? Are you reformatting your relationship, your marriage? Because every marriage is going through some kind of rebirth phases. And you can see you can, you can get much more understanding what's going on in the Dasha. Whereas the transit can be some kind of impulse to check the Dasha. You see, oh, in these years, there will be a big change in your life. So when the Sadi Shati comes, then you may see, oh, that is the big change coming. Uh, now, when it comes to the Antar Dasha, also, I know that many people are just taking the Benefic Malefic. Benefic is good Dasha, Malefic is bad Dasha. I even got a few direct messages on Instagram. I'm now in Ketu Dasha. This is horrible, right? But Ketu can be very good because this division of Benefic and uh, Malefic, this is the Naisargika, but there is also something which is called Temporal Benefic and Malefic. So this depends on which houses this Malefic is loading in your chart. For example, Saturn is Malefic. This means that this planet is harsh with you. Saturn may work, may give you the lessons in a harsh way, or can deal with you in a harsh way. But if it's auspicious for you in the long run, long term, this is fourth and fifth lords, for example, for Libra. This can be Yoga Karaka. Yoga Karaka is the best planet. So if you are Libra Lagna, Saturn is your biggest well-wisher. He wants good for you. He's giving you the fourth house, the peace, the fifth house, the properties, the uh, children, uh, students, Gyana, the knowledge. So the first and fifth are very good because this is Kendra and Trikona combination of these two houses, fourth and fifth, is success combination. So Saturn, single-handedly, this one planet for liberal Agna and Taurus is giving success to uh, these ascendants. So we cannot say that Saturn is bad. It can do this in a bit harsh way, or you may be expected to work in a little bit harsh way. Normally Saturn means that you can dethrow other or replace someone, be it the resignation, death, or any such uh, maybe misfortune. Uh, so that Saturnian flavor can be good, but the end goal, if Saturn is loading a good house in your chart, this temporal benefic. So the natural benefic or malefic, we know Saturn is natural malefic because it's working in a harsh way. We can use that word harsh, but the end goal, the end result is good if Saturn is loading the good houses like for Taurus and Libra will work the Kendra and Trikona. So the combination of Kendra and Trikona is the success uh, situation in your chart. Okay, guys, if you like this video so far, please click the thumbs up. It helps me with the algorithm to make my video more visible in this platform. So you are making me a big favor. Subscribe if you like to get notification about such videos related to Vedic Astrology. Now let's go back to this. Video. Now we have the questions about uh, Jupiter and Mercury in the eighth house for Pisces Lagna. So this is a very big, very broad question. First of all, eighth house may have something to do with secrecy. So I have seen this chart has uh, George Lake. He was a British spy working for Russia. He was caught and was given 42 years. It's 
quite interesting because 42 is the Rahu uh, age or length of time, period of time. And uh, eight houses all about the secret service or something secret because in the natural zodiac this is related to the sign Ali, Vrishika or Scorpio. Now we also know that when the 10th Lord or Mercury are in the 8th house, then this may give many transformation work, maybe some kind of suffering in work. It can give also going abroad or it can mean that the career life is not very important or there are no visible hierarchy in the career life. It could be more of a charity or spiritual project. And then very important part of this unpacking of this Jupiter and Mercury in 8. Of course, Jupiter and Mercury is Sarva Karesi Yoga. It's giving that transmission of knowledge as a blessing. Also, person is able whatever he's trying to do. So every project he starts is uh, given the good fruits, Sarva Karya Siddhi. So every action is giving Siddhi, the perfection. Lagna Lord in 8 also is giving very good for perfection. Also is giving the Sarva, Sarva Siddhi. Many perfections or every perfection according to Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. If you look for the Lordships, the first Lord in the 8th house is giving the Siddhi. This is because this is the 10th house of perfection or of something done uh, in a very nice way. Will be in the 3rd house from the Lagnesha. And here also, when the Lagna Lord or any Kendra Lord as a benefic is in Dushtanan, it's not good because benefics as a good guy uh, cannot protect, cannot keep the doors in check in a very uh, effective way. It's better to have a bad guys like malefics loading the Kendra because they are more like immune system. They are not allowing the bacteria or other type of uh, bad wishers in our life to cross our boundaries and touch our subtle body, right? So we have this Kavacha. These Kendras are the doors to our life. So if you have benefics, first of all, you have a good guy there who may be easily swayed or maybe uh, somehow manipulated so the door someone can enter our life more easy and that's good when this lot of Kendra if it's benefic it's also in the Kendra then at least this is this intelligence because this will be Jupiter Mercury will be working very good and the person will not allow will be very we could say vigilant when it comes to what are the outside elements want to do with our life but if these benefics are in Dushnan, this can give either a very spiritual person or this can mean that someone is ignoring and may other may then attack. This Kavacha has uh, flows. There are some uh, places through which the enemy can enter our private life because the Kendra are basically our private life also, right? We have first house, me, fourth mother, seventh relation and tenth is my work. So. Uh, if the Kendra Lord's benefic is in Dushna, then this is giving rise to the Kendra di Pati Dosha, which means uh, this may end up not good because we are prone to attack by bad wishers. This could be symbolically attack. This can mean that we have just bad experiences in relationship or home or whatever this uh, benefic is uh, loading which house, right? Uh, so we have also example of Eckhart Aron. Uh, he has uh, Virgo Lagna and Jupiter is in 12 in Leo sign, very important, and Mercury is in the sixth house. So, uh, Lord of Kendra are in Dushla. This is the example we are talking about. A bit different to what the Querent was asking, but the principle is the same. We have the Kendra Lords in Dushnana. So, especially here is Apoklima. Apoklima is the sixth and twelfth. So this is Kendra to 12 and 12 is about the foreign. So then we can get more stability in foreign countries. And he was born in California when he was young. Uh, he moved to UK and then he moved to Australia and then he moved to New York. In New York, he was for a long time unemployed, a striving actor. And then he was recognized, right? So that also shows the fourth Lord Jupiter is in 12. So property abroad or the place of stay abroad. Lagna Lord in sixth in Aquarius, sign of Rahu, so also abroad. And very important, the Lagna Lord is with the sun and the fourth Lord is in the Leo, in the sun sign. So he went abroad because of the father. So it was the father career life 
uh, he, the father moved the whole family, that is usually the case. Um, but here it's showing that, um, especially the role of the father, because that element of the son is involved in that yoga, right? And luckily he has this ninth lord with the tenth lord, Dharma Karmadi Pati Yoga, Mercury and Venus together. So it's in the Dushtana. Normally this would show that this Raja Yoga could be for some time only, but uh, because it's in a Kendra to the 12th house, so it's abroad, right? Then it can mean that uh, this can happen abroad. And then we could argue, okay, but he was born in um, California, then he was living in New York, but this is West and East Coast. So this is also for the astrological context abroad, right? This is a totally different culture and uh, for sake of the culture, the border is there. So the Rahu is entering the 12th house is activated and we can say that therefore uh, he was very successful. But also we can read that he had a divorce. So that seventh Lord Jupiter in the 12th house or so in the Dushtana always is giving some kind of, um, the circumstances are not easy, right? There is some shadow, there is some Saturnian influence in your life, which could mean distance, changes, uh, things are not uh, not so easy. That would be benefits in Kendra, right? So that would be a totally different story. One would have a lot of support in the bird country, in the bird family and so on. So now the last two questions are about the Atmakaraka. One was about the Atmakaraka Vargotam, Mercury in Virgo. The other was about the Atmakaraka is it more important in Rasi or in the Navamsha? Vargotam means also the access to the Rishis. So if the Atmakaraka is Vargotam, the soul has access to the Rishi. So this is kind of abstract. We can derive a lot of from this. Also, Atmakaraka means that your soul is into it. So whatever yoga you have in the chart, you can check if your soul is into it. And I would say that is the most practical, one of the practical usages or approaches when it comes to Atmakaraka. There are many people who are doing something, but we are calling them fake <laughs> if the soul is not into it, right? So you probably have heard that. Ah, you are a fake artist. You are a fake, I don't know, fake social activist. Your soul is not into it. You are doing it maybe for money, for uh, people, for recognition but you are not dedicated. So that deep dedication is coming from this Atma Bala. If the Atma Karaka is somewhere, the experience is very big. This can be good or bad, because if you have a curse and Atma Karaka is in the curse, also it means that you are, this is uh, touching you deeply. That is showing the heartbreak. These people can go through heartbreaks like for many years. They can be in a relationship for a short time and they can for years uh, digest what has happened. So if Atmakaraka is in the houses of uh, Venus related to seven Lord and fifth and seventh, then this may be the big experience. This whatever happens uh, in that uh, areas related to Atmakaraka is deeply experienced. And similarly, if it's good, also the dedication is there, the desire is there. So in that question, it was about the soul purpose. So we can say that the Atmakaraka will support the yogas, which are well placed from it. And therefore we can say that this is good to follow. This may be problematic because the soul will uh, find always an excuse if it's badly placed. And the soul, because it has the biggest power, right? can influence the mind, can influence our body. So for example, we can develop some kind of disease, we can develop some kind of aversion to something because subconsciously we will not be synchronized with whatever is happening in the yoga, which are badly placed from the Atmakaraka. So I would say that this is the way to use it. And the Navamsha will show more about the history. What is the deeper inner history? And the Atmakaraka is showing through which door it manifests in our life. Is it coming through relationship? Is it coming from uh, career life, right? So the Rashi is showing how this is touching my skin, but the Navamsha will show the bigger story because the Navamsha is more about the Prarabdha karma. So it is more about the seed, what is happening in that matrix of karma. So therefore, Navamsha is very good to answer questions like why? What, why, what is the purpose? What is really, what was the learning or the meaning coming from the various planets. 
If you'd like me to help you analyze your chart, the Rasi Navamsha, in which Dasha you are, if you have any cares, and what would be the best mantra for you to correct such uh, problematic position of plans in your chart, just hit me up with the email below and we can schedule a consultation for you. Okay guys, so I hope you get something out of it. Let me know by hitting the like button. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to get notification about some other videos in the future and see you in the next one.